Good evening, Oral Gibbs, and welcome to Oral Gibbs Live, coming to you live here from World Star Studios, Amsterdam Shopping Center. And with me this evening, I have the one and only, the man, he's the, he's the president, he's the leader, and he's a member of parliament, leader of the US party, none other than MP, Mr. Franz Richardson. How are you doing, sir? Well, pretty good, Oral. Um, good evening to your viewers, and thank you for having me here again um, on this wonderful Tuesday evening. Well, uh, thank you for accepting the invitation. A lot of things happening. Are you disappointed so far? Well, definitely. I think um, there's a lot is happening, and I'm very much disappointed to see how things are progressing with this young democracy that we have just gone into 10-10-10, um, where that's concerned. Um, when we take a look and see the behavior of the Council of Ministers after receiving a vote of no confidence, you expect that those members who sit in those positions mm. that we have always looked up to um, in, in this community, like M Minister Dennis Richardson, a member of, former Member of Parliament of the Netherlands Antilles, former State Secretary Marcel Gums, and uh, Minister of Finance uh, Martin Hassink, and a number of others that today are holding this country hostage where it pertains to doing the honorable thing and vacating their post. I think, Oral, it's, it's unfortunate that we are now using the constitutional in a way that we want to use it in, in let's say, in each other's interests. Um, none of those individuals who, who are now former ministers who said, because they consider them former ministers, because they receive a vote of no confidence on the 30th of September, to see that none of them, besides um, minister, former minister Claret Connor, who ran politically on a list, got, got, did not even got elected neither, but nevertheless he ran, he put himself on a list. To see all of those professionals sitting there and holding on to dire life to that position, and you see that they really don't care or all with what is happening in our community. The Minister of Justice, who the public I know for sure had the most utmost respect for, I know even the leader of the National Alliance, when speaking to him, had Minister, former Minister Dennis Richardson on the highest esteem that he was one of those that who he made sure um, a point after 10 10 10. And today, to see um, the former Minister um, Dennis Richardson now holding this country hostage for self um, prestige. And it ain't have nothing else but self at the end of the day, oral, because the, the Constitution is very clear. It might not be to the point that one would want to see, but we are young democracy. We built a constitution by the same members, some of the members who are holding those positions mm. today. They knew the constitution. They know exactly what the wording and what it was mean, what was meant when those articles was placed in our constitution that once one receive a vote and a confidence, they do the honorable thing. And we're talking about honorable. We're not talking about, oh, it needs to be specifically uh, matter when you're supposed to leave. No. We expect that uh, men and women in our community today would, in that position, would do the honorable thing and tender their resignation. Today now, I've wrote an article yesterday that came out in the newspaper um, really addressing the Minister of Justice. Um, I don't think the Minister of Justice is seriously looking and seeing what is happening in our community with the riddle of crime, um, broad daylight robberies of our businesses, casinos, uh, people are getting shoot broad daylight. All of these things has happened. Even while on my way here, or all we understood that in Union Farm, there seems to have another incident that is brewing. When is it going to stop? When the minister is going to take this country serious and decide it's time to step aside and allow the new government to appoint ministers to take the reins of this country with what is happening? I think the minister them, along with the rest of them, is making a mockery of this country. We are becoming like Haiti, like it's ruling by Papa Doc, mm -hmm. and this way they're behaving in there as if they must remain in there. Um, this is what the sentiments you're feeling in our community. Um, the people is being unsaved. Or all, if we continue and allow our community to be riddled with crime and robbery, what the tourists would think of this country? what the international media will print about St. Martin. We will then be blacklisted, and then the beautiful cruise ships 
the beautiful tourists that we normally work so hard to bring, but because of a few ministers who want to remain in office to defy our constitution, to remain there at all costs. And then you hear a lot of stories in our community, boy, um, the prime minister wants to remain there for a whole year because it improves his pension. You're hearing people saying all kinds of stories. I don't want to believe those things is the reason why the former prime minister wants to remain there to make a year in position. I don't want to believe those kind of things. But if you're hearing it on the road, Oral, and if this is what they want to hold on to, to improve their pension, because the former prime minister has one of the better pensions than anyone else who have always ran for office. And to see today what they are doing to this country and what they are doing to our governor at the end of the day, forcing him in a position that today now he's looking to the three wise men, I will call them, to advise him on three articles, which is what it is. He wants to be clear on Article 33.2, Article 40, and Article 59. Basically what the law stays in our constitution. Not to, to, to come to a decision of what is happening. I think it's unfortunate that, that we have to head in that direction. And it's unfortunate that Dennis Richardson, who worked so hard with the governor, Mr. Eugene Holliday, who have fought for 10, 10, 10 in this country, who made a decision that there is no need for election, there is a majority, and guys do the honorable thing. A man that you fought to the nail with the Dutch, you now are contesting his belief and what he stands for in order for the Dutch to come in to decide what is right and wrong in our country. I am saying this is not the cement we want to build for our people. We believe that we can take these decisions on our own oral in order to come to a, a solution in the interest of the people. The issue of the ship jumping, that is one thing. That has to be dealt with as soon as possible via changes to our electoral reform, changes to our constitution, but it ain't gonna happen overnight because it ain't something that you could just snap your finger and make certain changes. I remember um, last four years, while member of parliament, I invited Mr. Julio Romney at that time with the committee that I was part of to invite him to come and have a discussion on what can we do with electoral reform, with changes and stuff like that. It's an ongoing process that started from since the days that when the four years ago when I was a member of the committee that brought Mr. Julio Romney. I listened to a number of persons who today now are running the rain and talking about electoral reform. But a, mem a number of them who were sitting in parliament never wanted Julio Romney to come to parliament to have that discussion. But we insisted, my person insisted, to have him there. Because I think he's one of our own again, Oral, who continue to bring that issue forward where we could look at the different changes that we could make to our constitution. Maybe it might not be the right thing, but we can listen, look at it, and see how we could make some changes to reflect the, day, the days we are, what we are living in today. Well, no, uh, so now I, I'm Peter Richardson. Today is what, 21 days? Well, tomorrow's gonna make 21 days. Today's the 20th yeah. day. I think we're going on three weeks that we are now mm -hmm. held hostage by um, the Council of Ministers deciding they're not leaving, they're not um, tendering their resignation. And here's what, what is so hypocritical of the Council of the Farmer uh, Ministers. They are telling the governor, if you don't sign our decree, we will not tender our resignation. You must sign our decree before we tender our resignation as a council. So the governor doesn't ministers. have any other options? So the governor, what the, gov the governor has an option to do. Don't sign it and send it up for annulment based on a new majority that he have already agreed on. And I think that is the process. What he wants to do is handle it amicably amongst all of us as men and women in our own society than having the Dutch to decide for us. We continue to talk, we don't want the Dutch to meddle in our affairs. The same governor who was in Holland with former minister Dennis Richardson, where the integrity chamber was concerned and the discussions was there because the, the governor was there with them. He was there along with them negotiating when all of this was taking place. And today now, you are saying the governor is no longer good enough for you? The same governor, the former prime minister Marcel Gums talked about him, how Eugene is a great man. 
We got to, we got to honor this man. This is what he tell me. We got to make sure protect him. He's one of us. And today now you are telling our lieutenant governor, our governor, his excellency, Eugene Holiday, that you are putting his back against a wall and he no longer good what you were saying when you was in Holland and the things that he stand up against the Dutch that we could do the screen in our own, in our own country. Today you're saying that he's not good enough to make a decision in the interest of this country? Or what it is we are doing to our own? We are seeing it over and over. Same thing with the airport. Same thing. The prime minister, at the time as prime minister, before he leaves, drops a bomb, head to Europe. Head to Holland, on the way to New York. When you say, uh, can you explain what you the mean? The issue of getting rid of the managing director mm -hmm. of the airport. That they got eight weeks to get rid of her. So these things ongoing one after each other. Did he explain that continue. why? Why? Well, no one knows the truth of the matter to this day, but it has to do with screening, the screening process. But nobody knows the truth to what it is. Mm. I'm saying these things, you don't do that. Throw it out and then jump on a plane and disappear and create that, that type of anarchy within a government-owned company. We see the same thing with GB. GB is another one. Decision taken, board fighting management, management fighting board, board fighting the, the council of ministers, the prime minister, one after the other for meddling with affairs of the government-owned company. One after the other. All of these things continue to fester within, I guess, the coalition because that is what you see when you hear MP Maurice Lake, MP Sylvia Matza talking about, guys, let's get back to basics. What is the basics MP Maurice Lake was talking about? He was always hammering the guys them who we have always look out to in the neighborhoods. Let's give them contracts and put them back to work. Or I remember a couple of years ago when we look around Colby Hill in the different district, we saw our own people now making sure the cleanliness of the roads, the sidewalks was being done. Many years ago, foreigners was the ones who do it. Today now, our people is taking pride in it to do it. It's like a cycle going back. It used to be... Yes, many, many years ago, uh, our people, people did right. it. They cleaned the beaches and stuff like right. that. We now gave them contracts when we was in there, started it off. Mm -hmm. You remember when MP Romain Laville was telling, um, at that time, Minister William Allen, oh, right. about the boys in Sagagad who want to walk. Right. They got it. The, um, the guys in St. Peter's also got it. That was contracts was given to them. So those short contracts? Uh, those were a period time contracts, oh, right. and then what, what do you do? Because the issue you got, you have the, the major garbage contracts oh, okay. that contains most of the work, but they are not mm. executing it. So what needs to be done in the future, some of those things that in the garbage contract, the major garbage, needs to be taken out and give it to the local boys to do. Because the major garbage, garbage contract um, operators is not doing it oral. So why don't we allow the smaller boys who has companies in the neighborhood to do the work also? These are the things that you hear MP Maurice Lake talk about going back to basics, giving our boys and girls the opportunity to do business in their own country. Letter after letter, he has written to the party, to the whole party and the coalition, reminding them, guys, let's get back to basics. Let's start doing things for our people. But no, no one listened to him. No one was paying attention to his cries of the things that he wants to see done. And today now, um, everyone is now complaining about MP Maurice Lake, how could he do this? How could he do that? Um, I am so disappointed to see what is happening in our community today, that we see the, the leader of the UP and the deputy leader gets on a radio program and what you're hearing. One says that the UP controls the prime minister and the ministers, and the other one states, we don't, we don't think we control them. We don't, we don't think, I don't think we, we control them. We need to get our facts straight, what it is, who controls what, who in charge of what. Mm. And this is the misrepresentation is what is happening out there today. That the people are so confused with what is happening that they are not sure who to believe and who to trust. But I'm saying it is time for us to move forward. The time is too long for a new government to be put in place or it can't continue this way that is happening in our community. And the other thing, 
what we are seeing? We are seeing all sorts of experts, professors from the kingdom, giving this government, the farmer government, advice on what is being requested. But no one is asking the people of this country who put our constitution together. When did they ask anyone who was part of the constitutional process putting our constitution together to ask them their opinion on Article 33, Article 40, and Article 59? Who asked them what it is that was meaning when we put mm. those together? No one to this day have asked them. Um, while we have lawyers going on radio programs and explaining the articles very clear, oral very clear in layman terms. And today, what we are hearing, we are not tendering our resignation until the governor signs that decree. It is wrong oral. These things are totally wrong and said man can't continue in this. But business. besides that, we've had um, a whole year of basically not much done. <laughs> And now we have three weeks, basically, of a paralyzed government. And this can't continue. This is hurting this island unbelievably. Well, of course. Um, I've been meeting with some investors over the years, mm. over the months, and recently a couple of weeks, who wants to invest in some money. What is the first thing they ask? What has happened to the government? Do we have a government or don't we have a government? Who do we continue to negotiate and discuss on moving forward on projects that we want to invest mm. in yeah. St. Martin. This is one of the major problems we face in this country. People now continue with their life as usual, but they don't realize the negative effect this is having on our international, let's say, outlook of St. Martin that we have a government who's sitting there, who got a vote of no confidence, and who's not moving, but no one seems to know how to maneuver to move them out of office. No one. What we are seeing is everybody posturing, holding their position for themselves. Now, you know, um, when you look at the situation with the governor and turning to the courts for advice, what if the courts come back and say, you know, governor, you got to make the choice or the call? Well, of course, that would be the, the decision that the judges, the three wise men, the three judges that was asked to render the, mm. an opinion on the three um, articles within the Constitution. But at the end of the day, it is the decision of the governor, of um, His Excellency Eugene Holliday, who has to make that decision. But that's what I'm saying, because I, I know, it got to the, it's getting to the point now that uh, the governor, and I, I think I don't want to second guess his work, but he should have just you know, called his position who like it, like it, who don't like it. Look, this is the office of the governor. Uh, the people got to respect his decision. Either you sign the resolution, you go to the polls, or you tell that prime minister and the rest of them, boys, there's been a vote of no confidence against you by eight members of parliament, that's majority, go home. But this indecisiveness, this situation that we're going through now with three weeks, this is hurting the island, it's polarizing people, and it's not good. Well, of course, Oral, it is not good totally for the stability of this country, for investors, and for the people of this country. What we are seeing is crime on a rampant. Um, the government seems not to really um, show seriousness on what is happening. And we allow um, these things to continue to progress and continue day after day and it's as if business as usual for those individuals. Here, and here's where I have such a serious issue with what is happening. Each of those seven ministers, when you look at two of them, five of them is on pension already. Five of them is pension, mm. pensioners. Now you are telling me five pensioners allow themselves to be caught up in something like this that you ask yourself, but what it is you so wants to hold on to your position? What it is in that position? Or maybe they have that, a big mortgage, maybe they well, need the money. Or all, exactly. This is what it is. It all boils down to, and at the end of the day, I'm, I'm be honest with you, 
The longer you, po you, you remain in the position, the bigger your pension becomes. That is what it is. Because those individuals now looking out for what is a better pension for them. The problem you have for Minister Dennis, former Minister Dennis Richards, he can't go back to the high, high, co um, high courts to sit on there again because he already passed the age. What is he going to do next? There's nothing for him to do next, basically, or wait for another government appointment position. So what you got is all of them band together as a group and decide we're going to hold this country hostage. And the people who voted for those, mm. they really don't care. But that, but that, and, and you hear the hypocrisy. Mm. There's a hypocrisy in them. Yes, we need to put a stop to the ship jumping. But pro, former Prime Minister Marcel Gums, how did you become Prime Minister? The same ship jumpers who left their political party, MP Cornelius Weaver and MP Leona Man at that time, who made you Prime Minister? Is the ship jumpers? You can't be a, hypocr a hypocrite to say one thing and not doing the other. Then you shouldn't have accepted the position at that time. Then you know what you should have done? Accept the position and then drive for election and call for new election. Mm. But because now the table has turned around uh -huh. and others now decide, listen, we decide we can't work with this government more. We're going to form a new government and put a vote of no confidence. But, but could it be that the poor prime minister and the council of ministers, they can't do nothing if the, if the uh, coalition government that was there before, where the, you have the leader, uh, Mr. Halliger, and the deputy uh, leader, Mr. Myers, saying, look, guys, stay right there, don't move. Well, I think th those things are wrong for them also. Because when, when time comes for them to form government with jumpers, they went along. So then th the question is, why are you out there asking Maurice Lake to come back? Why did you went to MP Sarah Westcott Williams to ask her to come and join the government? Why did you went to William Allen to form a broad-based government? Where is the hypocrisy in this? Because if you are telling me, if they had come back, uh -huh. would you pull back the decree? Would you then say, listen, oh, we ain't going to the election, we have a new government again, we're going to remain. And they left you out? They didn't come to you? They can't come to me with that. Because people need to understand, uh -huh. I don't make these um, decisions just like that. Uh -huh. I, I don't play games or all. The reason why USP now is in this position is because, let me explain you, and explain to people as a man. Again, USP was offered to be part of this government where they offered the Ministry of Justice to USP. The agreement with me and MP Heiliger was that USP would appoint a minister for the Ministry of Justice within a year. I agree with that. That's, that's without a doubt. The reason USP wanted to get rid of Dennis Richardson at that time is because Dennis Richardson had no respect for the USP party. Now, they could do what they want with the, with the other coalition members. That's up to them. But when I am a part of a government, mm. no one goes and signs an integrity chamber on a protocol that ties this country in a position without at least informing me what you're doing before you go. That is a lack of respect where that's concerned. And I don't care who minister it is. That minister must come to parliament first or come to his coalition and inform his coalition of that decision that you intend to take. But the entire, the entire parliament agrees with you on that. Of course, because here what, here's the hypocrisy. While they, they don't agree with getting rid of Dennis, mm. but yet they come with 18 changes to the integrity chamber. Now, they don't want to slap him and tell him how you was wrong to go and sign something like this. But you come with 18 changes to it in order to fix it the way you would like it. But it shouldn't have come to that to embarrass him on the floor of parliament. It should have been discussed before you go and sign it, mm. and then we could have ratified it in parliament. But no, because MP Franz Richardson, the leader of the USP, is a no-nonsense leader, and don't, don't take that type of behavior from no one. No matter who it is or all. You must have respect for the members of parliament. You must have respect. Because at the end of the day, Oral, I have to go back to the people of St. Martin mm. to ask them to vote for me. I have to go back to my board, to my advisors in the party, to inform them what it is we are doing. Because that is what made USP what it is. Inclusion 
information to inform all what is happening. So MP, uh, Mr. Richardson, what if uh, MP Leonard Marlin says to you, uh, you know, France, I, I want to come back home? Well, those, that, we have passed that mm. station already. You would never... No. The days of that is over. We have passed that station. There is no return for that to happen where USP is concerned. Okay. I wish her all the best, and I wish her, wish her continuing the best. Because, that, um, because some would, people are saying, you know, it's always a possibility. No, people absolutely not. Okay. Not, with, not with USP. Okay. USP took a decision with the board, and we made our decision. We stand by our decision. People must respect a political establishment. You did not win the seat on your own. You win the seat via political party who have now put and caused itself in a financial position. The same thing that MP Heilger states. When the leader goes and, and let's say, buy all the stuff for the party, make sure all these things are done, who is left to take care of it? The leader of the party. Today, the USP has a debt remain there. The U USP will have one seat now. The member who left with the seat, who got the seat, he care about the debt of USP. You couldn't send our invoice? Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should have done that. But here again, uh, the same thing that MP Heilger states, you, you left with a debt. Mm. You're the one responsible for it. No one cares about that. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones get the seat, they're gone, bon voyage, and they're going to do, do what they want to do with it. You know, These things are wrong. So we believe that as USP, uh -huh. we made a decision, we stand by our decision, and we are moving forward in the best interest for this country where that's concerned. And B. Richard, you know what a lot of people are saying? They say, look, we are tired of all this political fighting and grandstanding. Look, some are saying, look, I don't have a job. Some are saying, I, I don't know if I'm going to have a job next year. Others are saying, you know, boy, I got a, a mortgage I got to make. I got a car loan I got to make. These are the things that are important to most of the people today, not this whole matter of whether or not this minister don't want to go with that MP jump or jump to another party. They call it sh ship jump. They call it party jumping. You know, it is unbelievable. The average man in the street, all he's looking for is some stability of in course. his life. Of course, Oral. And that is one of the reasons why when we had the Royal Caribbean project that was going to be built mm -hmm. with the 200-room hotel with the whole, um, let's say, ambience right. at the port and all that, I presented it to Parliament. What I was the one who present. Mm -hmm. They are busy with it. Oh, they are okay. busy with the financing of it. They are busy now with their final drawings. Sooner or later, they will have the hoping in the first quarter of 2016, they will do the groundbreaking of the, the project. That is going to create 400, um, let's say, jobs in the initial phase. When it's done, it's going to create almost three to 400 jobs for our people. Those are jobs we are talking about creating. That is what I believe in, what St. Martin needs a new flagship hotel that we can be all proud of that will create jobs. That is what I brought to Parliament. I didn't hide any project that I want to do. Anything that MP Franz Richardson wants to do, he presented to the public. I make sure bring it to Parliament. And that is the reason why the editorial and the Daily Herald said for the first time one project before it was even started was presented to the, pro the people of St. Martin openly via Parliament. That was something that I believe in, mm. presented to the public, because it, it entails a lot of jobs, opportunities for our people. And if we, all of us, together would decide and say, listen, this project is something that we can do. Let's all get on board and do it. Know what you get. Everybody behind the scenes, pulling it, chugging it for it not to happen. You're hearing the game playing. Mm. Oh, you can't allow France to get this done, because France is going to look good. Oh boy, this one can't have it happen because it has nothing to do with me looking good. It has to do with St. Martin and its people. It has to do with what are we going to do for this country. Same thing oral sports tourism. I fought tooth and nail for sports tourism in this country. A whole new idea of bringing activity, different aspect of tourism to this country. And what you get? A game playing again. Oh, France, MP France, which is the one busy with this. They call him the Sandman. They call him all kind of man. But at the end of the day, it was not for me. Today, now we are seeing our country is hurting because we rely on one pillar, one type of pillar, cruise tourism or overnight stay tourism and what? Here we are talking about sports tourism. 
Here we are talking about the Mecca in the Caribbean where sports is concerned, that people would have the opportunity to do many things, not only do sports, mm -hmm. shop, dine, entertain, gamble, everything on this island here. But yet, everyone gone again and say, oh, MP Francis wants to do this. So and you abandon it? You're not going to continue Of that? course we're going to continue it. We must continue oral. But the problem is, you, you, you need a majority to, to support your vision. You need a majority who's going to go along with it and who believe that it is something good for St. Martin. You need a group of people to say... So you're saying people didn't realize it no, was good for St. Martin? absolutely not. Because today, to this day, what you're seeing, what is happening? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Because it was there. It is on table. It was on record laid out. And no one wants to touch it because, oh, this one might get the credit for it. And that's the problem we got in this country. Is because who's going to get the credit? It has nothing to do with me for who's going to get the credit. At the end of the day, it creates jobs and opportunity for our people. It makes life be much better for our people. And that is what we need to put back focus in this country. You know, uh, Mr. Richardson, I've heard a number of things. Um, but I want to ask you this because I ask this to other uh, MPs and other party leaders. Parliament. When you watch Parliament, it looks like the members of Parliament are very weak. Government-owned companies and directors are summoned to Parliament, and they basically disrespect Parliament. Well, well Oral, that, that has to do with the, the lack of leadership within the whole government itself. That mm -hmm. um, you, you listen and hear that is not open. Um, when Parliament requests information, they have to look at one of the members who controls them in order to see if they're going to give the information. That is not how parliament functions, how it works. When you come to parliament, parliament requests information. Information must be given to parliament. And I think that trend needs to change that government must at all times be an open government to the people of this country because the people are the shareholders of all these government-owned companies. It's not just the politicians and their friends is a shareholder. Absolutely not. The people of this country. Let me, ask, let me take a call here. Uh, or, yeah. so, so what you're saying, because when you look at it, you know, uh, this island, we're going through some difficult times right now. Uh, we have the airport and the harbor there, like our flagship, you know. Uh, there's issues at the airport in terms of uh, permits to construct uh, a building. And, and what's so strange here is that if you're from some other place or from some other planet, you think that the airport is owned by some private company. Exactly. And while the airport is owned by the people, managed by the government, mm -hmm. you ask yourself if, if a company in Dubai is the one who owns um, our airport, that we don't want the airport to be able to build their FBO. What we are seeing, St. Kitts has moved on and built their FBO. Anguilla is busy with theirs one. Every neighboring island within the region is building their FBO. Why are we not allowing our FBO to be built? Mm. Why? Because it ain't my contractor friend who's building it. But it was a fair and honest bid system went on. Why? Because we promised it to one other contractor over another. And because, boy, this contractor didn't support my party. This contractor didn't donate to my um, political campaign is the reason why this is happening. Or all this thing is dangerous. What is going on? If someone win a bid, let them build the project. If the airport agreed that the project is that is what it is, and the engineers and everyone else, the financiers and everything, everything was done properly, why not allow it to happen? Why not why hold it hostage? As if, boy, I am protecting this one, I'm protecting that. No, Oral. What we are seeing was wrong, and it should not continue. And it's going to create some serious problem in this country. Because the airport went and borrowed money based on projects that they have to execute. Here now, the airport now borrow money for the FBO and can't execute it. So what the financier is going to say? Gen ladies and gentlemen, we have a problem. Your ratings could affect your ratings where that's concerned. The ratings of the could be affected based on these projects not being executed. Let me take a call for you. Uh, Oral Gibbs live call. Hello. Hello. Yes. Richardson, 
Good evening. I would like to know from you what can be done to salvage and to rescue the perishing and the dying for the pensioners especially uh, in that situation. However, parliamentarians have seen to it that they be guaranteed of a fat salary. Besides that, doubling up when they could to get even an extra pension. Some of them already on pension, as he was explaining. But nothing is being done to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying pensioners who certainly have built this country, the foundation of this country. It is a shame, a burning shame. What can be done? Please answer me honestly. Well, thank you, Doc. And I, and I know you're very passionate, and I saw you today in town, and it was one of the questions you, you asked me, um, what it is we're going to do for the pensioners. I'm saying, look, five ministers sitting there who has a pension already fighting to get a better pension than the average pensioner on this island. Now, you would say they've been in office there now for 10 months. They would have come with a solution as a pensioner for the other pensioners, what we can do for them. We as parliament has tried over and over. Remember the days of the Netherlands Antilles when, we was part, when it was part of the National Alliance, when we decided that we're going to increase the pension to 1,000 guilders. We did kite up to 1,000 guilders at that time. But it's not enough. But the, a pension is only, could only be what you put in your pension is what you receive. But I believe government now, seeing the high cost of living, need to act, at least offer additional help to the pensioners of this island where that's concerned. And I do believe that we must look forward to sit with the said and all the different advisory councils to come up with, with a, a, a feasible solution of how we can fix the issue for pensioners. Because you can't go now and tell the pension fund to increase it. It don't work like that. Government now need to build a pot to help those pensioners who can't afford to, let's say, get a decent pension that government now would, would assist in that where that's concerned. Because you're no longer working, you're no longer paying into the pension fund, but now government needs to, to find a solution to help them where that's concerned. But, but that's and it's been, something that yeah. we need to look at. All. That's being done in some of our neighboring islands where uh, people that are on pension, they, have, they get a voucher of uh, $200 to, use, to go towards electricity, uh, water, telephone, etc. Well, definitely, yeah. I believe that we need to look for the, the electricity company to bring it down much lower for our pensioners and not just do it every six months mm -hmm. and keep changing it like that. It should be a standardized agreement that all is there. Pensioners, not just that all the pensioners, and not, let's not, because everybody's a pensioner. Oh, 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 not because one pensioner is better than the other, right. this one don't get it. Let's, I don't believe in that. Let's take some calls here. Oral Gibbs Live on caller. Hello? Good evening. Good evening. What I would like to say that the Master Gump has said we have 160000 put down for new elections, and the pensioners are always calling, calling saying a thousand euros is not enough. Why you don't take some of that money and increase the pensioners? The pensioners for the old pensioners, put some of that money towards the pensioners' salary. And the next thing, Billy D was over on the French side saying, he asked you this question. In 2013, you said the majority rules in Parliament. He asked him why now the majority didn't rule now. He said in the Mexican standoff, they had a vote of non-confidence. And in the Mexican standoff, they did not have a vote of non-confidence. So I don't know why, and Billy D even didn't correct him. So when they go on a program, they have to pay calls, be a man and pay calls, so the callers can... Um, Correct them. And Tio knows, Tio knows to himself that there was no vote of non confidence in the Mexican standoff. Good night. Right. Well, definitely, there was never no vote of no confidence against the, the four ministers who had remained there. 
Um, absolutely not. It was totally different. And I think t MP Heiliger need to stop blaming everyone else but himself. I think he need to take responsibility as leader of that party and take some of the responsibility for what is happening. Stop blaming Maurice. Stop blaming Sylvia. Stop blaming everybody else. You have to look at yourself as a leader just like I look at myself for the mistakes that I made and agree that I made mistakes and correct them. But you must be man enough to stand to the public and say when you made a mistake, where that's concerned. Because that's what makes a great leader of listening to the people. And so far, he has failed in the sense of accepting responsibility for the failures of what is happening today. Uh, Oral Griffith Live and Caller, hello? Yeah, Caller? So, so, you, so then what you're saying is that a, a number of mistakes were made in the up party whereby uh, many of their candidates never got a chance to perform. Of course, Oral. How could you ask people to run on your list? Some of them who walks in your cabinet, who has experience, and you don't give them the opportunity to be at least a minister, to pass the veteran to be a minister because you put them on a list. You can't ask people to run and then just block the eight, the seven seats and say, boy, we hold on to these seats. Nobody else getting a position. Nobody else we appointed. Why did you ask people to run on the list? For sure, you wasn't going to get the 15 seats or there was not 23 seats for everybody to get. So I'm saying these things are wrong when you treat people like this. And that is the reason what we are seeing, the collapse of the UP party today. Paul gives live your own call. Hello? Yeah, good evening. Good, good evening. evening to you, dear, and to good friends. Evening. Good evening. Number one, I, um, Michael Gunn said is 150,000 that can put into elections now. But the budget cannot be balanced. Secondly, I know two days I understood, wanted to help at least 700 Dominicans to come to the island, give them documents right away, and build some low income. I couldn't believe that because we have too many people here living on the island that can't even get a little pigeon coat to, to live in. So I'm not sure of that one, but the 150,000 that he said he has to put in election. No, he's have to put him out money. Good night. Right. Let me give you a better one, what I heard today come in here, Oro. There was a bidding put out for St. Martin Day festivities for St. Martin of 20,000 guilders that you could have put in a bid mm. to host, to handle the issue of St. Martin Day at that day. I understood today that the minister came out, since no one bid for the 20,000 guilders to host to do the St. Martin Day festivities, I understood today they put a small committee together now, and the, the amount of money the government put up now is 250,000 guilders to do the one day St. Martin Day event in town. 250,000 guilders they have found. Instead of the 20,000 guilders that they put out on bid to do it, now they have given out the, to award 250,000 guilders. In mm. order to do this in Martin Day. Well, apparently, festivities. they couldn't find a fool to take it at 20,000, so now they. Exactly. So, what they have done now, they raised the ante 10 times over, 10 times, 15 times over, to 20, 250,000 gillers. I understood today. It's going to come out tomorrow in the media and the public. Now, the question is how could an event that went out and bid for 20,000 gillers mm. now gone out today for 250,000 gillers? And a government that got a vote of no confidence is now deciding to spend and sign off the country into debt because they're on their way out. What? The same way they give away the land, the divorce land that Moose Lake fought so hard I mean, to buy, give it, I mean, give it away to APS for one gilder. One for, gilder. For, for people who don't know what APS is. Uh, the pension fund. Yeah. Here now you owe the pension fund tremendous amount of money. Now the pension fund won the land, then the pension fund should pay a fair pay a, pay, a fair share of what it paid for the land, what government paid for the land. But no government give it for one gilo. Give it to the pension APS for one gilo. Is it true that, that uh, a contract was signed away with a contractor to bail those houses also? Well, I understood also that is part of the agreement that the contractor, the contractor, everything is already set up for that. No, I, I don't like to go based on stories. So I will wait until I see the details of it. Um, where that's concerned, or because I heard about it. But MP Maya said it's not true. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to go based on 
what people are saying. Yeah. So I heard about it too. That's the reason why I don't even worry too much about that. But what they did, they gave it for one gill. But how are you going to give away your asset for one gill down while you owe APS almost what? Uh, almost 100 million, close to 100 million, you owe APS. But I'm saying, what kind of business operation you're running? APS is running like, like a business because they have to protect their interests. Government also needs to protect its interests. Right. At least get a fair buck back for that property that government and the taxpayers got to pay back for. Now you give it for one gilder? Or oh, come on. What it is we are busy with? With all due respect, we must be serious where that's concerned. We can't continue to do these things because you're on your way out. So what you want to do? Tie up this new government who's coming? Tie them by their hands that they can't do nothing. Tie up every, every agreement, every contract. Give it all the land on the ring road to the Chamber of Commerce who does nothing for business. What I understood. Chamber of Commerce don't do nothing oh, where business is concerned. Hold on, I gotta come back. Let me take a call here. Oral gives live and call. Hello. Hello, good night. Good night. Yes, good evening, gentlemen. Good, good evening. evening. I have um, uh, three, four questions for Mr. Francis. Sir, we don't have that much time, so you're gonna have to make it very quick and pose the question. Go right ahead. Very quick. Um, I wanna know if, because uh, just tune in, I kind of late. Are you for early elections? One. Um, two, what was the reason for the fall of the government when um, the National Alliance, USC, and BP form a coalition? And number three, what reason can you give the people that it's going to work this time? Okay, thank you. Well, first, I have the problem with all election. Um, USC is always ready to represent the people. Secondly, you would have to ask MP Cornelius Weaver and MP Leona Malin while they break away from their political parties to join the government at that time. To this day, no one can give a proper explanation why they break, where that's concerned. And the other question... Would, or if it will work this time. Well, I could never give a guarantee where that's concerned that it will work this time. All I could guarantee you is that USP will continue to work in the interest of the people of this country. First and foremost, how we have always done. It has always been that way, and that is what I believe in. Like you want to guarantee it's gonna to rain tonight. <laughs> you can't do that, right? But but um, before the call came in, the caller came in, I asked you to hold it a while so I could take that call. You mentioned that the Chamber of Commerce received land. Yes. The Chamber of Commerce received almost give or take about three thousand or four thousand square meter land on the ring road mm. where a Lekabet is. Okay. Chamber of Commerce they give this to him. Eh? Chamber of Commerce who does nothing for business. Chamber of Commerce who you ask them, what are your plans? What it is you're doing to enhance business? What are you doing to defend business? But today, government gave them sign off. And hear how it sign off. Not by the minister of Ramir. The, the prime minister now signed that one. Because the minister of Romi has an agreement to go back to chamber and his contract is there waiting for him. So he can't sign it, so he allowed the Prime Minister to sign that deal. And I'm thinking these things are wrong. These things are totally wrong, what you're seeing happening in Oral. Absolutely wrong. Now, um, in terms of the new government that you're supporting, if the current, uh, and you, you call them former council ministers, decide tomorrow, we're going home, can you fill those positions? Well, definitely. Right we are ready the same day. Oral, this is the most amazing thing. When we decide to form this new government, mm. we form it on the basis of mutual respect with each other. There was no argument who won this ministry, who won that one. Absolutely. There was not even one fight with each other for a ministry position or who going to appoint this minister and that person. Because USP would have said, no, we wanted to do one. No. We remain with the ministry we got. The others accepted what they got, and we move forward from there because we realize it is time to go and walk for the people of this country. Secondly, we already knew who the ministers was going to be to put to be vetted. So we all of these things we already have ready in place, mm -hmm. ready to go, where that's concerned. So it ain't as if while we sitting on the sideline twiddling our fingers, didn't know what we was doing. The problem happened is they got caught with their pants down, as the proverbial word would say. We was really ready for this than they was ever ready because look how long it took them to appoint ministers. 
we now have our ministers, our candidates ready to be appointed and ready to be vetted and ready to run this country, ready to take the reins of this country and put it back in the people's hands where that's concerned. Oral Kids Live, you're on call. Hello. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Are you there, caller? Uh, he would like to change can, you the law. can you speak a little louder, sir? I would like to know if Mr. France would vote for the law to change that you remain, party remain with the seat. Okay. Well, well, definitely. I believe that we need to look at it. Um, I believe that as long as the party is the one who have gained the seats, it should reflect the party. But constitutionally, we have to look at it, how it works, where that's concerned. And yes, um, we have agreed as a new government that that would be one of the first things we're going to work on besides the budget and besides fixing the issue where APS and the debt of SV and all that, those things are concerned. Mm -hmm. We believe that electoral reform must be fixed once and for all. Or I'll give the live and call. Hello. And good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. MP Maurice Lake, MP William Allen said the left work there to be done with the dump. Why is it you is still going to Miami with Caracara looking for new deals? Because to say something else with them. Answer that to me, please. Well, definitely. That thing caught my attention in the meeting of Parliament when both MP Maurice Lake and MP William Allen stated that they left an agreement there. And that hurt me to see that MP Maurice Lake, who was the last minister, left something in place. But yet now we are seeing the minister them is traveling to Miami, looking at new facilities, and what happened to that agreement that former minister William Marlin and former minister Maurice Lake left there. No one even brought that to, to the forefront until Maurice Lake, MP Maurice Lake, brought it out and said, listen, guys, there was an agreement there. What happened to that agreement? These are the things that frustrated MP Maurice Lake, and I know it surely upset MP William Marlin because the bidding process had started on that project at that time. I believe within a year now, if that process had continued, we would have started seeing the facility being built now by either one of them at this present time. But today now, what we are hearing, a whole new deal has to happen. Everybody's week after week traveling between Santo Domingo, Miami, Texas. Um, then you hear them in Las Vegas. You hear them all over the world mm. looking for facilities where it pertains to waste energy concern. Right. Why oral we had the... From what I understood from the two former ministers, everything was in place. So you ask yourself, what went wrong? What is the reason mm. for now what we are hearing out there and seeing that everyone is now starting from scratch? We don't have time for Mount Phillipsburg to continue going any higher. What we are seeing is a toxic waste is, is, is seeping through. The smell is coming into Phillipsburg. These things can't continue the way it's happening oral. And the people of St. Martin is fed up and is tired of what is happening. Uh, and we are out of time. 30 seconds in closing. Well, uh, oral, I want to thank you for having me here. I want to make the, leave the people aware that we are ready as a government to govern this country. We believe that we have taken a decision, a bold decision, to send home the Council of Ministers who have not done anything. And we are saying to the the, the people of this island, give us that opportunity to come out and work for you once and for all. It must be about the people. It can't no longer be about individuals where that's concerned. Well, then, Perusian, thanks for coming. Much success. Thank you very much. That's it for now. I'll see you next time. Until then, good night. Take care. Bye.